how to knit slippers hi everyone norman here today's video is all about knitting house slippers i put a lot of effort in developing a pattern for straight needles that won't overwhelm an adventurous beginner while still meeting the higher expectations of more advanced knitters the result will be a pair of gorgeous felted slippers you can knit in one or in two colors. You don't need to knit in the round at all and there is no complicated color work technique involved either. Plus it only takes me around two and a half hours to finish one. Let's show you how to knit felted slippers. <laughs> This slipper pattern is super simple to knit. First we knit the sole, then we add the instep and the cuff and then we seam everything together. It looks like it wouldn't work and it doesn't make any sense when you start but at the end it all comes together quite like magic. You will find the link to the pattern in the description below. It's available on Etsy and on Ravelry and if you are already subscribed on my Patreon account you will get the pattern for free and if you have been considering to support my work well this could be the perfect opportunity become a patron and get this pattern for free. For this slipper pattern you will need approximately 200 grams of felting wool, circular or straight needles size 6 to 7 millimeters, a tapestry needle, scissors, a tape measure, stitch markers and of course a washing machine. Two tennis balls or dryer balls will facilitate the felting process. The first and most important step when it comes to knitting slippers is calculating your size. I have no clue how your wool will behave or your washing machine and both are vital when it comes to felting. So the pattern comes with a couple of rough sizes from S to L but a swatch will be safer. Step one, using the yarn and the needles you want to knit with. Knit a little swatch that is 20 stitches wide and will be 20 rows high. Just a little swatch in plain stockinette stitch. Step number two, put things in your washing machine according to the instructions on your yarn label. If there aren't any instructions and no instructions on the website of the yarn manufacturer either, well, I did 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, a standard color broke program, including tumbling, but no drying. And then I added two of these dryer balls, or uh, you can also use tennis balls, and I put every everything in one of these, well, um, washing nets. Step three, we need four simple measurements. So first of all, of course, you need to measure your swatch. Check how uh, wide and how tall it is. That should be fairly easy. And then we need to measure your feet and this will be a little bit more difficult to illustrate for me here. So first of all, we need to know how wide your feet are here at the front here at the front and go around. See, I'm going around a little bit. I'm going around a little bit. So for me, it's around here 11.5 centimeters. Note down that number. And we also need the circumference of your feet. So go all the way around at the base. You know, just stand on the floor and uh, put the or wrap the tape around and note down that number as well. Just to illustrate one more time, so if these are your feet, we need this measurement and this measurement. Step number four is some super simple math. So I know the circumference of my feet is 58 centimeters and I know how, how wide my swatch is. 
and simply divide these two numbers. That's how often your swatch or how many times the swatch fits around your feet. And you know that this swatch is 20 stitches wide. So simply multiply that factor times 20 and that's how many stitches you will need on your needles at the end of the sole. We start in the center and at the end you need 92 or I need 92 stitches. That's the diameter to figure out how many stitches you need to cast on. Well, we know the circumference of the sole at the end. That's 92 stitches. We also know how many rows our swatch is high. So it's 24 stitches. Don't be confused, it's 20 stitches, but the long tail cast on and the standard bind off creates one row in the same breath. And of course, there is also the immediate uh, bind off loops and cast on loops. So a row with 24 or 23 stitches. So I know it's 24 rows high and I also know how high my swatch is. In my case, it's uh, 99.3 centimeters. So just divide these two and this will give you your gauge. And then I also know how wide my actual feet are. So I measured 12, 11.5 uh, centimeters. So simply multiply these two, uh, two, two numbers and this will give you how um, many stitches your sole needs to be wide. For me, that's, I don't know, it's something like 29.6, 20, 29, uh, 29.7 stitches. Now, if you paid attention, we are going to seam things along this line. So this means, so uh, we are actually just knitting half the sole and then folding things over. So this means you need to divide that. So my sole should probably 30 stitches wide. So uh, divide um, then by two and that's 15 stitches. Now again, as we start with a long tail cast on it and it creates one row in the same breath, you need to subtract one. So my sole needs to be 14 rows high. Look at the pattern side by side and it will make more sense. The pattern also tells you to increase uh, by four stitches in every second row. So, so in every second row means seven rows times four and that is 28 stitches. So, what I'm saying is, as you knit the sole, you are increasing by 28 stitches across those 14 rows. So, this means at the end we need 92 stitches, we will increase uh, 28 stitches. So, this is our cast on 92 a minus 28 is 64 stitches. That's how many stitches you need to cast on. If that was a little bit too complicated for you, get the pattern and read through it slowly and in greater detail and maybe watch this again. But this is the calculation. So let's get started and knit these slippers together. So I will cast on 64 stitches here using a standard long tail cast on for a shoe size, a, a US shoe size 9, that's European shoe size 42. And as you can see, I am casting on around two needles. We really need a stretchy edge here. It shouldn't be too tight. Anyway, I will cast on 64 stitches. So here are my 64 uh, stitches. You really don't need to leave a very long tail, just one that is long enough for weaving in ends later on. And then we just turn the work around and knit across. Just knit across one row. We will knit the whole sole in garter stitch and uh, you know it really adds a little bit of contrast and it can be a little bit more durable. As you knit across this row, this first row, I want you to place a stitch marker five stitches before the center and five stitches after the center. So um, there should be, I'm catching the yarn here, there should be um, 10 stitches here in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, and 10. Then I place another little stitch marker and finish knitting across the full row. So in my case, I have 27 stitches here, 10 stitches here, and another 27 stitches here. And then you can just um, turn around and then we can start increasing. So you knit one stitch and then you knit a KFB. Knit into the front of the stitch and then knit into the back of the same stitch. KFB is really a lovely increase for garter stitch. And then you continue knitting across until you hit the first uh, stitch marker here. Just knit across. And then you stop one stitch before the first stitch marker and you knit another KFB. Knit into the front and into the back of the same stitch. Slip the stitch marker and knit across the center here. Just knit across. and then slip the stitch marker here and right after the stitch marker knit another KFB and knit across until the end of the row. And then here on the other side two stitches before the end of the row you place another KFB and knit that last stitch. Stitch. Then we can turn around and here on the wrong side you just knit across. So just place these four increases on the right side and knit across the full wrong side. Of course you need to slip the markers but that's about it. And then turn your work around again and we will add another increase around. Consider placing a little stitch marker here on this side so you know whenever you see, oh come on. So whenever you see this little stitch marker you know okay this is a side where I need to increase because from here on you can follow the exact same pattern. Knit one then add a KFB here for the second stitch and then knit across until you hit the first stitch marker or rather until you are one stitch before the first stitch marker. And then here you place another KFB, slip the marker, knit these um, 10 stitches here between the marker. Then you uh, slip the marker of course and place another KFB here right behind the stitch marker. And here at the end the same thing all over again. Two stitches before the end of the row place a KFB and knit one and then turn around and knit across the full wrong side. And from here I will repeat these two rows over and over again until I have altogether 92 stitches. So uh, on my needle, so for me this means I will have seven increase rounds, uh, rows and seven rows of garter stitch and I will stop directly after the last increase row. And I'll see you there. So here I am, I am placing my very last KFB here 
And now it's time to turn the work around and we can actually break the yarn. That is, I'm going to knit these slippers in two colors. That's nothing you absolutely have to do. Uh, do whatever you prefer, but I like to have my sole in a contrasting color. And then we are just going to knit across one full row in a contrasting color. You can weave in this tail as you go right away. Um, I don't weave in both tails at the same time as you go because this will create a little lump in your fabric. And so I just weave in this current uh, little tail here and then the other tail uh, the regular way. And then I just, just a couple of stitches. I mean, this is felting wool, so you don't need to be too careful. And then I'm going to knit across the full row here using this yellow yarn. If you are following the pattern, then this is row number 15. Now there's one little thing I want you to do. So here, as you come across your little stitch marker here in the middle, I want you to move it one stitch to the side. So one stitch to the side. So it is now enclosing, oops, 12 stitches here in the middle. So I'm going to move this stitch marker one stitch to the side on this side and another stitch here on the other side. So here in the middle in between those two stitch markers are now 12 uh, stitches. So here, park the stitch marker, knit one stitch and where is it? Place it again and then finish knitting across the rest of the row. Just knit across. Okay, so just knit across and then turn around. And from here on, we are going to knit, so the instep we are going to knit in stockinet stitch. However, I want you to place a selvage, a one stitch garter stitch selvage. So on each wrong side row, I want you to knit the first uh, and last stitch of every row and then purl across the rest. This will make seaming a lot easier later on. So just purl across the wrong side row here, but knit the first and last stitch. And here, as you come across at the end of the row, make sure that you knit the last stitch. And then turn things around and from here on, we are going to decrease uh, by uh, four stitches across four rows. So, again, continue in a stock and knit stitch here until you are four stitches before the stitch marker or the first stitch marker in the center. So, I want you to stop here four stitches before the center and then you knit one SSK, slip, slip, knit followed by one knit two together. So here on this side, we want a right leaning decrease. Then you slip the marker and knit across these 12 stitches. Remember now we have 12 stitches here in the middle or I have 12 stitches. Maybe you have 10 or 40. And then here after the, the stitch marker, you do the exact same thing. You knit an SSK, so a left leaning decrease here on this side, followed by a knit two together. And then you just knit across the rest of the row. For the toe box, you are just decreasing here in the center. Oh. Okay, so finish this row here and split the yarn here. Also very easy to fix. And then 
turn around and now comes the only slightly difficult part because we need to decrease here on the wrong side as well start with a knit stitch and then purl across until you are four stitches before the first stitch marker again okay so here four stitches before the first stitch marker on this side I want you to purl these two stitches together that's probably a decrease you already know and then I want you to, to decrease these two stitches with SSP slip slip purl so slip two stitches knit wise slip them back to the knitting needle and then purl them together through the back loop it's just the purl or the counterpart to SSK on the wrong side or on the purl side. Uh, if you don't want to knit this, you could also purl two, two together, purl two together through the back loop, or uh, even just purl them together. However, SSP will look the neatest. We'll do it again here on this side. So here, the same pattern. So purl these two stitches together and then SSP these two stitches. If this is going too fast for you, I have slow motion tutorial for all of these uh, stitches on my uh, second YouTube channel. And I'm also going, or the links to the tutorials are also available in the pattern and then just continue purling across the rest of the row. Remember here on this side as well, knit the last stitch. This will create a nice edge for seaming later on. And then you need to repeat these two rounds one more time. Okay, knit, oops knit the last stitch turn around and after these four rows with four decreases each we are going to knit two rows with two decreases each so again we are going to knit until we hit the first stitch marker here in the center but now we are going to stop two stitches here before the stitch marker and just knit these last two stitches together, slip the marker, knit across, and I guess you can already figure out what's going to happen on the other side. So, knit across, slip the marker, and here on this side, we are going to decrease these two stitches by knitting an SSK. So just one decrease here and then knit across the rest of the row. And knit across, turn around. And we are going to do the exact same thing here on the wrong side. I hope you don't mind me uh, going well, I'm not really going slowly, I guess, but I am really showing every little step, um, despite uh, the fact that there is a pattern. I just want this to be as accessible to beginners as possible. And of course, please, this is just a reminder that any time you feel I am going to um, too slow, you can always play this video at half the speed, uh, just hit the settings button. And here on the wrong side, two stitches before the uh, first stitch marker, you place another SSP, place another SSP, slip the marker and purl across. And then you do a purl two together on the other side of our little, well, toe box. What we are knitting here will be the toe box and doesn't look like much yet but 
it should emerge pretty soon. So far, you are just needing a weird stripe, I guess. So here on this side, purl these two stitches together and purl across the rest of the row. Okay, so with these six rows, we shaped our toe box. Doesn't look like much, but just imagine, so we are going to seam this here in the center. And well, you have a little toe box in the making here. Takes a little bit of imagination, but it's going to uh, look much better in a second. So from here on, we will need to shape the instep. And this will require short rows, but uh, don't be scared. Uh, it's going to be super, super easy because we are actually using a little trick. So we won't because this is felted. We don't really need proper short rows. So we will get away with a little trick here. Okay, we are here before the stitch marker, but I just want you to knit across, slip the marker, and then continue knitting across these 12 stitches here in the center. And now we can employ our little, well, trick, I guess. So, Slip the marker and now we are going to knit an SSK here on this side as well. You will be able to see this decrease line. It needs to lean towards the um, left. So we need a left leaning decrease. And now we are going to turn the work around and just slip that first stitch and slip this stitch marker as well and then you purl across. So typically when you're knitting short rows, you need special techniques like German short rows, shadow wrap or so. But in this case, uh, because this is felted and we are decreasing at the same time, we don't need a special technique. How cool is that? So slip the marker and here on this side, we are going to Purl these two stitches together. So, oops, just like before, before, purl these two stitches together and then turn your work around again. Slip that stitch uh, point to point, purl wise as well, and then knit across. And then we are going to do the exact same thing one more time here on this side. So knit this stitch, slip this marker. Now you have a little gap here, but we are going to SSK the next two stitches as well. And this will close this gap. It's not visible. And once this is felted, it won't be visible <laughs> at all. And then turn around, slip uh, point to point and purl across. Let's do that one more time. Or I am going to show it to you one more time. And then you have to do it on your own a couple of more times. So I'm going to purl until I hit the stitch marker, slip the stitch marker. And then we are going to Purl the next two stitches together without splitting the yarn, of course. There's something in the way, I think. There you go. Turn around. And I want you to repeat these two rows three more times. So slip, knit across, and then SSK, turn around, slip, and two together here on this side. So repeat these two rows three more times and I'll see you there. Okay, I finished these six rows and 
now our toe box is really taking shape and you know it actually starts to look like a slipper now theoretically speaking you could continue knitting these short rows until this hole here is barely enough to squeeze in through your foot but i actually want to raise the instep and here this heel section a tiny little bit so after these uh three uh, six rows i am going to knit across two full rows so uh, so far we did short rows and now I'm going to knit across two full rows to raise the instep a little bit and the heel. If you don't have uh, or you have a very low instep or so, you might not need that. So you, then you could just continue uh, knitting these short rows, but I am going to knit uh, raise the instep a bit so here the trick is just that i continue knitting across the full row and i'm not continuing the short rows but i'm just doing this for two rows and then we'll continue with the short rows you need the short rows to shape the instep but here we are going to raise this little bit here but other than that, you stick to the exact same repeat. So you slip that stitch, you slip the uh, stitch marker, and then, well, don't knit the stitch marker in, and then you continue purling. And over on the other side, you will also decrease. But instead of turning around, you continue purling. Uh, also, I remind you to take frequent breaks when you are knitting this. Oops, we might need this. And then here, purl these two stitches together. And then continue purling across. As I was saying, um, remember to take frequent breaks. Working with needles and a, a, that big and a yarn, a yarn that is so uh, thick and heavy will and can be very exhausting for your hands. And uh, if you stress them too much and don't take frequent breaks, uh, you could, uh, I don't know, develop tendonitis or something like that. And that's not what we want. So knit the last stitch we will need this continuous garter stitch salvage later on for seaming and now we are going to transition to knitting these short rows again so these two rows were just there to raise the instep a little bit and to provide you with a little bit more room and an ergonomic fit okay so here slip that stitch slip the marker knit across and then over on this side we can start with our short rows again. So slip the marker, then knit an SSK here on this side, and then turn around. Slip the stitch purlwise point to point, and purl across. So from here, I want you to continue these or I will continue until I have only 18 stitches left on either side of the stitch marker. I'm fighting a little bit. It's still warm outside here and so this felting wool is somewhat sticky. So it's always the exact same pattern and I want you to continue knitting these short rows 
or rather I will continue knitting these short rows until I have only 18 stitches left in front and uh, after the stitch marker on either side and I'll guess I'll see you there. For you, the calculation is pretty simple. So measure your foot around the ankle. When you put your slippers on, the ankle needs to fit through your cuff, so be generous. For me, it's around 30 uh, centimeters. So 30 centimeters, and of course, you still know how wide your swatch is, and then you can simply uh, divide these two numbers, and this will give you a factor, 2.4 in this case. And of course, you also know how many stitches your swatch is wide, 20 stitches, of course, that's easy. And this will give you 48 in this case. This will give you how many stitches uh, the circumference of your ankle will be. So you have your 10, 12, or I have my 12 stitches in between, so 48 minus 12 is 36 and of course on both sides 36 divided by 2 is 18 stitches that's how i arrived at, um, at those 18 stitches if you want a wider opening just stop two rows before or maybe even four rows so i'm adding the finishing touches here this is my last purl two together then I turn around and now we can start finishing our little knitted slippers. However, here as you knit across this center section, you may consider that here after five stitches, I place one increase. So I will place a KLL, knit left loop, but you could also do a make one right and make one left. Then I knit two and place another increase here. Here on this side, I do may a K a KRL, knit right loop. You don't have to do this. This will add a little bit of extra fabric here in the middle of your uh, foot. Uh, let me get my uh, finished thingy. So this part here ends up being a little, just a tiny little bit more well-rounded. You don't have to do this. This is entirely optional and you don't have to knit KLL and KRL either. Uh, then uh, we slip this stitch in here. I will place another decrease here. But then I will continue knitting. So um, all the way to the end of the row. And then we'll use short rows, Pro again short rows, but this time proper short rows to raise the heel a little bit. So I'm gonna put this down and show you the difference. So this is the first sample I've knitted for this pattern. As you can see, it is quite flat here towards the heel. And I wanted a little bit more support, so I came up with a slight um, alternative that has, see this little slope here towards the end, which gives, lends a little bit of support here towards the end. Now, it's a little bit more difficult to knit, but I think it's worth it. So, okay, here on the wrong side, I knit one, I'm continuing my garter stitch salvage, and then I purl eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now we turn around. And I'm going to add a German short row stitch here. So I bring the yarn to the front, slip things purlwise, and then I pull down to create a double stitch. You could also do a shadow wrap short rows or a wrap and turn short rows, whatever you prefer. Um, but of course you could also skip doing these short rows and just knit across 
uh, or knit back. So turn around, knit one, put one. And now I'm going to purl six, just six or maybe a little bit easier, just stop two stitches before the previous double stitch. So here's our double stitch, one, two stitches before, turn around, bring the yarn to the front, slip that stitch, purlwise, pull down to create a double stitch, and then knit back. And turn around again one last time so knit this first stitch here and then we are going to purl four one two three four so again we are stopping two stitches here before the previous double stitch turn around create another double stitch and that's already it but again, if you don't want that, you could just skip the short rows and purl all the way back, which is what we are doing right now. So now we will purl all the way back. And as we come across the double stitches, as we come across these double stitches, so here, catching the yarn. So here's our first double stitch. We purl them together. So here's the next double stitch, purl it together, purl one. This is the last double stitch, purl it together, and then uh, continue knitting across. Then slip that, purl these two, well, you can actually remove this stitch marker here as well. Purl together. And then we need to add short rows on the other side as well. So we are going to purl all the way to the end. Okay, there we are, turn around. And now we will also add short rows here. So in this case, we are going to start by knitting nine stitches. That's five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Turn around. Again, slip one purlwise with yarn in front, pull down to create a double stitch, and then continue purling. Knit that last stitch and turn around. Now we are going to knit seven stitches and stop two stitches here before the previous double stitch, turn around, slip one purlwise with yarn in front and pull down to create a double stitch. And then we are going to knit one last pass. So we're going to, in this case, knit only five. Again, stop two stitches before the double stitch. Turn around, slip purlwise with yarn held in front and knit all the way back. Turn around. And this finishes our short rows. Okay, we are almost done and only need to knit two more rows. So I'm going to uh, change colors here, but I will leave this tail here should, well, you should consider uh, leaving a slightly longer tail here that is longer than you need for strictly uh, weaving in ends. And then I'm going to um, pick up a new color or well, the old color for me, but you could also use a different color, uh, whatever you prefer. And then I'm going to knit one stitch and I'm going to weave in this color here right away. Again, I'm just weaving in one 
detail because otherwise I do feel it creates a little lump or a noticeable thicker a section in your fabric. And here as I come across these double stitches, I'm going to uh, knit them together, but I will continue weaving in my end as I go. That's about enough. Here's one last double stitch. And then I'm going to knit across two rows. So just back and forth, just two rows. And this will add a little cuff in a contrasting color. And I'm going to do this in garter stitch again. So we have garter stitch here, stockinette stitch, and then the very last two rows are also garter stitch. So we are almost done here. We only need to bind off. Now I'm going to use a standard bind off, but I will do it with uh, two needle sizes larger. So, so far I've knitted with six millimeter needles and I'm going to bind off using eight millimeter needles. Um, you can also try to bind off a little bit uh, looser, but this is probably easier. You can also use a stretchier bind off. So here are two samples. So this is the bind off. This is a standard bind off. And as you can see, it creates a tighter hole. Whereas here, I picked an Icelandic bind off. And as you can see, it flares out quite a little bit. However, it will also make putting on the slippers a little bit easy. So I have super slender feet and I prefer a tighter, more secure fit. This cuff here will nestle around your ankle where this one here will be a little bit, well, loosey goosey. So for me, you know, that's 20 seconds of annoyance when putting things on and two hours of a more secure fit. But if you have stronger feet, a slightly stretchier cast on might be what you are looking for. Again, it will probably flare out a tiny little bit. So see how this rolls out a little bit, but it will also be, um, and you can tell the difference here, um, it will also be quite a bit easier to slide in. So uh, decide for yourself what you want, but I am going to use a standard bind off here. So as you can see, just a regular old bind off, nothing fancy here, but sometimes you just don't need fancy. My only concession here is that I am doing it with a needle size uh, well, two sizes larger. What you can also do is as you knit these stitches, stretch things out quite a bit and, you know, really pull those stitches out farther than you normally would. This will also give you a slightly stretchier edge. Of course, I don't really need to do this here. And then just bind off all stitches the regular way. So I bound off all stitches and uh, we still need to seam things together. Obviously this just still doesn't quite look like slippers, does it? So we still need to seam things together and we are going to do this using our tail. And we will seam along this edge here, this edge here all the way to the middle. So I want you to keep a tail I want you to keep a tail, sorry, this is a little bit difficult, a tail that is, is at least twice as long as this distance, but rather, you know, um, do it three times as long. We need to seam this together and better safe than sorry. So keep a very long tail. So, and then of course, um, pull this all the way through so this is secure and then we can seam things together. So thread a uh, the tail on a blunt tapestry needle and now we need to close this seam here with a mattress stitch for garter stitch. Now this will be super simple. So you have pearl bumps here or little bumps here on this side and this side of the C. And here see this is the bottom pearl bump, here's the top pearl bump and the same on the other side. So here 
we have the top pearl bump and the bottom one is a little bit well hidden underneath. And we will always go through the top pearl bump here on this side. Always through the top pearl bump here on this side and the bottom pearl bump here on this side. For the first stitch, it might be a little bit harder to see. And then here, this is the top pearl bump, sorry, top pearl bump. And here, this is the bottom pearl bump. I mean, if you miss one, it doesn't really matter all that much. So top pearl bump, at bottom, sorry. And so you always alternate between these two bumps. And kind of weave in between here. This is our little bottom pearl bump. Top pearl bump. So it's r remarkably easy to do. However, the difference is that the uh, mattress stitch for garter stitch kind of lays flat. And after every, well, one or two inches, you uh, pull uh, tight. Don't pull too tight, it shouldn't pucker. Um, just close the seam. And in this manner, continue closing the full seam. Now you will see the blue yarn picking through. That's okay. We are going to cover this up in a sec. So just continue seaming. So I always kind of pinch the seam here between my fingers. That makes it so much faster to seam. And it's also easier to um, see the individual little pearl bumps. Um, should be fairly easy to do. Okay, I covered the garter stitch section, but of course here at the bottom, this is just a cast on with no pearl bumps. What do you do here? Well, here, see this is just like a braid or something like that, a uh, well row of little Vs and it's the same here on this side. So what I want you to do is I want you to go here below the inner leg of this V and the same here on this side. And then simply pull tight. Go underneath the next V on both sides and always pull the yarn through the inner legs of that V. Don't skip one because then your project will be lopsided. That's probably not what you want and always go through underneath these little V's and this too, like the mattress stitch for garter stitch, will create a flat seam. That's the keyword here because of course you don't want a uh, noticeable ridge on the inside of your uh, slippers where you possibly uh, step on or so. Uh, that's not what you want and just seam things together here. Very simple. And again, after every two inches or so, pull tight, but don't let things pucker. Make sure to go also through underneath these last two stitches. They can be a little bit harder to see. And then you are almost done. You just need to uh, pull the tail through to the other side, here through the other side. This will also remove a little ear or something you might see there. And then you can just weave in the rest of the tail. Just go, I don't know, diagonal. Don't seam here, go along the seam because that will be noticeable, but here just go diagonal for a couple of stitches. Now you don't need to turn this into rocket science because you will be felting this. So you don't need to go uh, into three different directions here. Just 
secure things with a couple of stitches by piercing, that's probably what you saw, by piercing through uh, the stitches and then do the same thing with all the other tails here on the inside. There's just one last little bit you need to do or you can do. So remember I told you to leave this tail here a little bit longer. So bring it to the front and now you can use it to hide this section of the uh, seam. We didn't, I mean, you could also switch yarns here midway through, but I just feel that's not as secure. But what you can do is you can just use this tail and trace uh, the same pearl bumps you went through with the blue yarn. It's actually fairly easy so because you can see it. So you just go above the very same pearl bumps and pull your tail through. And this will pretty much hide things. And this will reinforce this seam a little bit without adding a ridge or some bulk. And you know, this is the heel, your heel will constantly be hammering against it. And I just feel this adds, aside from uh, hiding, oops, Aside from hiding this little blue yarn, it's also reinforcing this section and I think this is a good idea. Okay, that's it. You finished knitting your first slipper. You could try things on. I mean, they will be way uh, too big, of course, but uh, you finished one slipper, be proud. I'm going to put this in a washing machine using the exact same uh, settings that I used for my swatch. This means 60 uh, degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit, the normal color wash program, uh, adding detergent with tumbling, but no dryer. And then I'm going to add these uh, dryer balls here. Uh, you could also use some tennis balls or something like that. And uh, this will add friction and facilitate the felting process. And then I am also going to put uh, my slippers here into one of these um, one of these uh, washing nets. I got these on Amazon and it will just keep any debris from entering my washing machine. And what you can also do is because it sometimes it's a bit, they, they felting is a little bit hard to predict, especially uh, uh, washing machines are different. So what you can also do is you can use some old socks or some uh, cotton rags or so and lightly stuff them so they will retain their shape. It's important to do this we lightly they will shrink quite a bit and you don't want to hinder that process but you could do that okay one and a half hours later this is the result aren't they gorgeous they shrunk quite a bit but you will also notice that there are still a little bit well more on the wonky side so there are two things you need to do right away so first of all if you notice any fold line bulges or so try to carefully massage them out stretch things and if things stuck together carefully pull them apart. You can of course also use a scissor. This is often the better option carefully. And but if you stuff them like I did and put it into a washing net, that typically doesn't happen. However, what you should also do is you should immediately put them on. First of all, you of course want to know uh, if they came out the right size. But uh, while they are still a little bit damp and wet, you can block them in shape. So put them on and the heat of your feet and the shape of your feet will block them. Walk around the house for five or 10 minutes or so, or just sit on the couch, uh, whatever you prefer, and that will really uh, settle the shape. And then you can let them dry overnight and it will make such a big difference. So we are back here in my studio. My felted little slipper is almost dry. Look how gorgeous it looks. And from here, it's up to you and your creativity. First of all, of course, you need to knit another one. Uh, one is probably not enough for you. And then consider doing the following. So first of 
all, you could add embroidery. Use a chain stitch or a duplicate stitch before felting or after, whatever you prefer. And then, for example, you could add the initials here, either here or in the back, uh, so the various family members can easily tell their slippers apart. Or what you could also do is, so I've seen people in Kyrgyzstan do this, so they cut out a little piece of leather and then they sewed it to the sole. This will add durability. Or if you go to your local yarn uh, uh, craft store, sorry, or uh, on Amazon, you will probably be able to find this uh, non-slip uh, silicon liquid you can use to create these little silicon dots here on the sole and this will also help with, uh, um, uh, well, it, well, it may, will make them less slippery and of course it uh, will also make them more durable. If you have some scraps left, what you could also do is you could knit another sole, just another sole, and before you felt them, you insert the second a second layer here inside. Maybe use some needle, a, a, a tapestry needle to sew things together and then you will have a, a double sole for extra durability and of course extra warmth. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this knit along. Comment below with your questions, like this video, subscribe to my channel and as always, happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day!